Welcome to Rotorat, I'm Ladrib. Today, we're looking at the Mavic 3. Now, normally, we're flying FPV drones here. That means we're doing freestyle, racing, fast chasing, very dynamic shots. The Mavic 3 is a whole different animal, but we love all drones here. So we wanted to see where does this fit in if you wanna get into drones, if you're already flying FPV drones, who is the Mavic 3 for, right? So this is everything you get in the box. You get the drone itself, you get a radio, you get this cool little cover thing, some spare props, cords, charger, everything that you need to fly. Many people buy a Mavic as their first drone. It's very beginner friendly, but also has professional capability. We've seen a lot of people start with a Mavic and then maybe they graduate to FPV. It really all depends on what your goals are in doing drones. If you wanna get some great real estate photography or videos, this is badass. If you wanna fly in the smoke of a drift car, you're gonna need something a little bit quicker and a little bit more dynamic. You're gonna need one of our FPV quads, right? The Mavic 3 is covered with more sensors than any other Mavic. I mean, it's got the front sensors, it's got the back sensors, it's got bottom sensors, it's even got top sensors. How many Christmases have we seen the news article about how many people crash their drones the first day they get it? And I think DJI is trying to cut down on that number a little bit. But this drone isn't just for beginners, it has professional capability. The camera on here, this Hasselblad camera is, I mean, it's a four thirds sensor size. The image quality is incredible. It can do 4K up to 120 frames per second. The bit rate is bananas. I mean, it's just, it's a really sweet camera. And you'll see it has actually got two. Smaller camera above it is actually for zooming in. 28 times total zoom, I think eight of it's digital. So you can get right up on your subject, kind of get that news chopper sort of look. So we're gonna take this Mavic out along with one of our FPV drones and kind of see what are the different types of shots that you can get with each different drone. We got Reese behind the camera. Now he's got a lot more experience flying this style of drone. So we're gonna put him in command of the Mavic. I'm gonna break out one of my freestyle quads and we're gonna go fly and film something that can be both dynamic and fast as well as slow and predictable. Really put both the FPV drone and the Mavic through their paces and see where does each one shine. So being a cinematographer, I try to be on location earlier than everyone else. So I figured that this would be a great time to test out the low light capabilities. Shooting this in 4K 24 frames per second at f2.8 I'm allowing the most amount of light into the sensor. For a drone, this is absolutely incredible. There is hardly any light in the sky, and the Mavic 3 is picking up a great deal of information. I also use this time to check the weather app, as the winds today feel stronger than usual, and the windy app confirms it. 8 knots gusting 13 predicted throughout the day. It wasn't very long before Sean showed up with his boat and we were ready to test out the unique camera that this Mavic 3 drone has. Closes the iris. What? Like just like. Oh my gosh! Uh, I can it's see. got a baby iris. So is that a micro four thirds camera? I'm I'm thinking so. That's crazy. Yeah. That's what that is. Yeah. Same yeah, as that that's camera. So cool. Just look at the colors. That CMO sensor is freaking nuts. Yeah. If it's micro four thirds, truly, like look at the dynamic range. Yeah. That is just some voodoo. Really, really. Twelve point eight stops of dynamic range. I know that just sounds like a bunch of jargon, but that's what a lot of cinema cameras have. And then above it is what? a. A optically, it looks optically, but it's they call it a uh, hybrid 28 times zoom. Well, the thing about it is, though, if you're on a vibrating flying drone, though, and you've got like 28 times zoom, is it actually going to be stable or is it going to be like this? When you're zoomed in, every little movement, like you, you pick up a lot. So I'll be really curious to see like how well can that gimbal stabilize for 28 times zoom. Yeah. Nice. So I was looking at it. The top camera has some kind of optical. Like it's it's doing its own thing inside Wait. the gimbal. Oh. So the camera, this whole thing is stabilized with the gimbal, and then the zoom lens in there also has some kind of. It kind of it kind wow. of was wobbling. I was shining some light, just trying to see what was going on in there. Yeah. And it was kind of doing its own little thing inside. Yeah. That's cool. Let's see if you can track it with like some significant zoom. All right. That looks 
so good. That's incredible. It's, it definitely takes some finessing. This looks like you're in a helicopter, dude. Yeah. That is. Don't know what else to call it. Yeah. A quick note: while we were really excited about the zoom feature when looking at the phone screen, once we reviewed the footage on a larger screen, it's clear that there's a drop in quality when zooming in. That's to be expected with any digital zoom, and it could probably be managed a bit better by not zooming in so far. But no matter what. You just shouldn't expect the image off of the zoom camera to look anywhere near as good as the full-size camera. That being said, it's still a pretty nifty feature, and DJI does call it an explore feature to set the expectation that it's for looking around and having fun and not necessarily getting the highest quality image. Okay, here, while we're going slow, while we're, while we're going to catch up to him, see if you can do an active track orbit. So I'm, only gonna, I'm gonna go way slower, yeah, just right. on the boat. Boat's in frame, draw the picture over the boat. We're gonna do an orbit, so point of interest, and set it up and hit go. Oh, that's great. Okay, now, uh, I'm, now I'm just gonna slowly cut over to Sean. Yeah, now while she's he's down. Okay, so now it's doing, so that's what it's supposed to be doing. Right. And I mean, we're, we are moving. We're only going about two miles an hour, two, we're going about three miles an hour, and now it's able to keep up with us. That is crazy that fully autonomously, it's orbiting around us and tracking. The app is an amazing tool that helps dial in any setting you may need for the camera. DJI also has ample flight modes like the active track or my personal favorite, the point of interest, to help beginners create cinematic moves out the box. However, I rarely use the active track mode and while testing it, I was struggling to get the app to lock on a subject. So fully autonomous, it was tracking and orbiting. That is really cool. All on its own. I wish it could do that at speed though. I it can't just can't do it at do speed. It at but, but there is this new Active Track 5.0 that's gonna be coming out in a future update because we have a pre-release drone. Being able to track and orbit something at three, I'm, I still think is really impressive. But if we could have a little bit more speed to be able to track you when you're doing your yeah. thing. I'm interested to see how you're gonna land your FPV drone. I'll just plop it in the boat. Yeah, good luck. This is not a beginner friendly operation to fly FPV over water like this. Like, you gotta know what you're doing. Like, the Mavic, aside from your sketchy takeoff and landing, I'd fly over water all day, no problem. But I would say like, you should really be taking off and landing from land, from a dock. When you fly too long, the Mavic will just take over and be like, I'm, I'm going home, I'm gonna land. The FPV drones, this is all manual. Like you gotta be you gotta be pretty skilled. So who's this drone for? I mean, it's really easy to fly, so like a, a beginner could get into this, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's a, it's a beginner-friendly drone with a lot of features. So even the advanced aerial cinematography pilot would love this platform. With the Micro Four Thirds sensor and 12 stops of dynamic mm -hmm. range, I mean, it is a dream to fly. If you're gonna get into it, you know, you're gonna be looking at over $2,000. That's over $2,000? Over $2,000, and I they have- I feel like that's a little up there for a beginner then. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a- Oh, uh, like, uh, man, to chew. like if, man, if you know you're gonna get into this, this is the way to go. This, this drone is badass, but that's a lot of money. It, it has a lot of features. Because I mean, the air, what, you can get an air for like five, six hundred? Fly more packages, a thousand dollars. Yeah, so. so for a lot less, you can get in the air and doing it, get your feet wet, but and again. if you want more, more power, more flight time, more capabilities, uh, you're gonna wanna lean towards this. And on top, we didn't even get to test it. The Cine Mavic 3 has right. a one terabyte solid state drive built in and it 
allows oh, so you to shoot ProRes. Well, how much is that one? Oh, uh, like five grand. Yes. Oh, five grand. Yeah. Better be shelling out those big dollars. I mean, that's, I mean, but that's for pro grade stuff, right? If you're gonna be on a movie set, why not, right? I, I guess so. I mean, I do think that this comes at a steep price, but you're gonna be able to day one fly this, get pretty good shots. There's so much headroom with this drone; it can really grow with you. However, ultimately, if you want to get in the action, gotta say FPV drone is the way to go. You're gonna win but, it every time. But then, I mean, your skill levels really gotta be up there, right? No. So and and the skills that you develop on this don't even necessarily translate. It's, it's a much different skill operating a throttle stick instead of an altitude stick, not having auto leveling. It's a whole different beast. We have seen a lot of people start on Mavics and eventually come over to FPV. And I think we've also seen pilots start on FPV and get a Mavic to add to their tool bag. Even though I've been flying FPV drones for years, I still love having a Mavic. There are certain shots that FPV drones just aren't good for. Out on the boat, you're doing that bird's eye view, looking straight down at the boat. You just can't do that with an FPV drone. There's all sorts of different types of shots that you can get on a platform where the camera can move a little bit more independently of the drone. That just opens up a lot of things. And I would say just the portability is a huge, huge part of drones in general for me mm -hmm. because the fact that you can start folding this thing down and put it in a backpack <laughs> along with all your other cameras you're, uh, you're able to bring this on so many different trips. Someone told me once, That's pretty nice. the best camera is the one that you have. Yeah. So if you are you have this thing in your backpack, it's it's available, it's the best room. This folds up so tight, and then this little carrying pouch. I know you don't even like to bother with it. But Can I call it a muzzle? It's a muzzle. Can I call it a muzzle? You gotta muzzle the beast. It's a, it looks like a shark, and that looks like now the shark can't bite you. All right, you're out in the field. Three. Action's about to happen. Two, one, go. Come on, Michael Bay is calling action. The ambulance oh, is moving man. down. Oh, man. Ready to go. Dee -dee -dee. It's pretty quick. Although, the button being on the back is kind of weird. That does aggravate me that it's trying it's to run like, away from you yeah. rather than be on, on top where it's just not. Yeah, the older ones, they used to have the button up top, which yeah. I think was nice. Putting it on the back, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's kind of weird. It's cute. If you want to charge this drone, it comes with a 65 watt charger and it plugs into the rear. Obviously. So is the only way to charge this through the drone? Correct. Right there. That seems kind of weird to me that you can't charge the battery separately, separately from the drone. And I guess if you buy like one of the fly more combos, then you get a dock with it. That's correct. But if you started with the drone and then just bought another battery, fly, you can't charge while you're flying. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, it is. So I didn't even get to fly this thing. I want a shot at this. All right, so you, you're gonna put our phone on it, right? right. So this pops up and then there's a cord in there. You just pull out one this side. Thing. That, yeah. So this is gonna plug into my phone? Correct. All right, that's on. It's a new chirp. I like the chirp. All right, let's back it up. Where, what are we doing? We're just backing it up. Okay, oh, okay. fold everything. I, I'm safety. Okay. I'm captain safety. Oh boy. Oh, yeah, that. So the, already the sensors are beeping at you. Oh my, it won't let me fly it at all. Hey, oh, a little hey, bit. Hey, hey, hey. Look at that. That's crazy obstacle. Will they even let me go up? Look at this. Can you guys see this? I'm full, full up. Yeah, it's actually sensing the ceiling. Sensing the ceiling? And it'll tell you on the app like how many feet. Oh, yeah. I'm holding full back. It's smart. But I can turn this off, right? Yeah. All right, I go in here. Yeah, I don't want any of that obstacle avoidance. And now I can kind of, oh, I'm moving it. Yep. Now you can control it. I'm moving it. Oh, yeah. That is a nice looking sensor. That is. What do you guys think? Is this uh, is this the ultimate Mavic ever made? That's the new Mavic 3. We hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Reese Dockhand. I'm LaDrib. We'll see you next time on Rotorite. Like and subscribe, Rotorite, baby. <laughs>